Conjugation, a top topic in Russian, a lot of things to learn about it today. You will have all of the details about conjugation and why you need to know it and how to apply it in Russian. Conjugation is when we take verbs, like let's say играть, to play, and we turn it to играю, I am playing. This change of this t to you is conjugation. We also have it in English too, to play or I play, he plays. So this S at the end is added whenever we have the third person singular, right? So we also have it in English too, but unlike in English, in Russian we have six forms compared to only two forms in English. So let's learn all the details about Russian conjugation right now. Let's take a verb играть to play. Играть is an infinitive, so it's not conjugated yet. And we need these six lines. Я for I, ты for you singular, мы for we, вы for you plural, он, она, оно for he, she, and it, and они for they. Like I said, we have six forms, and we're going to have one form for each of these. So, я играю, ты играешь, мы играем, вы играете, он, она, оно играет, and они играют. So, we have a different ending for each of these personal pronouns. Of course, conjugation is not only used with personal pronouns, we can replace these with an actual word. Like, let's say, Papa играет, Dad is playing, Mama играет, Mom is playing, Друзья играют, Friends are playing. So, as you can see, these personal pronouns are just placeholders for first person, second person, third person, etc. Of course, we can replace them with any word that we, that we have. Oh, that's clear, but now let's take a closer look at this conjugation. What happened to the infinitive? What do we do? Let's become scientists now and study the science of the Russian language. Играть, to play, ends on this at. We don't take away the whole ending at, we took away the last two letters, t. T got chopped off, and then we replaced that t with the proper ending, right? You for ya, yes for ты, etc. So, this играть is the first group of conjugation. We have two. This is the first group. All verbs that end on at and yet, like let's say a verb гулять, will also be in the same exact group, in the first group. So endings at and yet are in the first group. And that's their conjugation. Take a screenshot, jot it down. That's the conjugation of the first group. Hope it's clear. This is super simple. We take a verb, like играть, infinitive, and then we chop off the last t, right? Gone. And then we replace it with a proper ending, like Я играю, you is used here, ты играешь, ешь is used here, etc. Super simple in theory. In practice, this might take some time to make it automatic. But don't worry, we'll talk about the practice of this at the end of the video. Now let's get back. Whenever there's a first group, there must be a second group. Second group is verbs like говорить, that end on it. Sometimes we have verbs like смотреть, that end on yet. So it and yet are both in this second group. Now, let's take away the смотреть and focus on говорить. Я говорю, ты говоришь, мы говорим, вы говорите, он, она, оно говорит, они говорят. Second group must be different from the first somehow. Of course, it's obvious. Let's, in fact, compare them side by side. The endings are different. Obviously, for some of the words, the endings are different. The ones that are highlighted right now, they are different. But also, there's a second difference there. With the first group, we only chopped off t, right? A stayed there in the ending. For the second group, we chop off the whole ending it. So, we don't have E in the conjugated form, as you can see, right? So, we don't have that. And that's the main difference between the first and the second groups, is that with the first, the vowel stays there. Only two letters get chopped off, and then we conjugate the verb. For the second group, we take it with the whole three letters of the end of the word. And you think that we are done. Second group, that's it? No. We have the third group of Russian verbs, which are infinitives. Not really a group, but we're going to make it one. Infinitives. Like, let's say a verb есть, to eat. Super basic verb, to eat, right? We conjugate it like this. Я ем, ты ешь, мы едим, вы едите, 
Он ест, они едят. First of all, the conjugative forms have almost nothing to do with the infinitive. They have no similarities whatsoever besides the first letter Е. All the rest are different. And also, within the conjugative forms, there is no clear pattern really, right? So, you will encounter verbs like this, where there's no way to predict its conjugated form from the infinitive. No way whatsoever. But those verbs will be super common, and then over time you will kind of learn the conjugated forms of all of those verbs, and you'll be good to go. Why does this happen? Russian is a super old language, and so maybe thousands of years back there was a rule in place. But as people kept on using it, the simplicity of the language or the simplicity of the conjugation wins over the rules. It's much better for us to sound more freely or to speak faster than to adhere to some rule that was set. And so the most common verbs have this in common because they were used so much that we needed to simplify them at some point in history. And so now we are stuck with this chore of remembering all the verbs, all the forms of all the infinitives. For you guys as learners of Russian as a second language, this is a chore. But in fact, this is a simplification of the language. We kind of remove all the difficult parts of the language to help that language evolve. And so that's why we have these forms of yeast that are super unpredictable. And there's a ton of other verbs that will look just like this. But where you practice these exceptions is through practice. Now, let's talk about practice. If you want a simple way where you don't have to create anything for yourself, then we have already created a ton of exercises for you as be fluent. Check it out with the first link in the description. If you are already a member of be fluent, then you have access to this already. As you can see, we have a number of present tense conjugation exercises under each you'll be tasked to put the verb in the right form, depending on whether it's ya, ты, мы, etc. Now, if you're not a member of BeFluent yet, you can join for free and access these exercises with the second link in the description. Seven days for free. Try it out. See if you like it or not. You don't have to pay for anything when you join. Now, if you don't want to join BeFluent, if you want to create your own exercises, I would say that you have to do two things. You cannot simply drill the table of conjugation. That'll be okay, but it's not going to be good for long term. You'll forget it pretty quickly. Instead, take a verb. Take all the forms of that verb. Let's say back to Igrat right here, right? Take all of these forms and create a sentence with each of them. But don't look at the table when you're conjugating a verb. Try to test yourself from your memory. Test your memory on how good it is with all of these forms. If you are looking at a table and then you're writing a sentence off of that table, then when you're going to be speaking to a person, you won't have it in front of you. You won't have this table in front of you. So we have to prepare as if we have nothing to fall back on. And that will ensure a long-term memory of these endings and of these patterns. But in any case, you can join BeFluent with this button right here to learn more about Russian conjugation, other topics, or keep on watching our YouTube videos with this next one. It's up to you.